NASA and SpaceX are working together to build the Starship Lunar Lander for the Artemis 3 mission that will happen in 2027 or 2028. And there's a really key component to this lander that I think a lot of people are overlooking. And it's a really basic component that with but without it, like they couldn't make it to the surface of the moon. And NASA released some information about this the other day. And I want to show this to you. NASA astronauts test SpaceX elevator concept for Artemis Lunar Lander. It's an elevator. Everyone's been on an elevator. It's super basic. You go up, you go down. We've seen them everywhere. They're in every tall building. They're on the side of buildings. They're on the side of skyscrapers. People wash windows in these kind of things. But NASA and SpaceX are working together to build the most innovative off-world lunar lander elevator built ever, ever. This is the first one ever. Okay, so NASA astronauts uh, Nicole Mann and Doug Wheels Wheelock participated in a recent test of a subscale mock-up elevator, SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System. They'll be used for the Artemis 3 and 4 missions on the moon. So the important thing about this is this is a mock-up. They're working on this right now, and this is not the full scale of this thing. Now, the cage that they're in, very important. If you fall off this cage, bad things can happen. Even though the gravity on the moon is not that bad compared to the gravity on Earth, but you're still going to hit pretty hard. So they have to be completely secure and they have to be completely confident with this system when they land on the surface of the moon. And mind you, getting to the moon is the hardest part. Landing, super hard too. Well, I guess getting to the moon is the easiest part compared to landing, but also this part, one of the most important things, because when you get to the moon, if you can't get to the surface, you're in a 150 foot tall rocket. You can't just climb down. You can't just like walk out and go down a ladder. There, uh, There's no ladder attached to this. It's an elevator. So this is the way down from the out, from the inside to the outside of the starship and then down to the surface of the moon. Now this is, it's a thing that's already been done a zillion times, right? We have window washers. They use something that's very similar to what window washers use. It seems like the window washer is very secure. You have a cage all around you, maybe not as big as the lunar cage of the HLS, but you still have guardrails, you're safe, you're strapped in, you're harnessed in, and you have devices on this that can stop it whenever you want, go up and down. There's, it's touch, it's tactile. It's not a touch screen, right? And what NASA did, as you can see, we're going to go over this in a second, but they show that this is not a full mock-up, full 150 foot tall starship. This is a small portion of that, just to show that it's possible that this thing can work and also go over the instruments and over the controls of this with actual astronauts. Maybe these people won't be going to the moon, but they do have access to other systems and they have been trained, highly trained by NASA for years. And as you can see, they're wearing spacesuits, mock-up spacesuits, because when you're in space, you have to wear this spacesuit when you go out into the, the atmosphere of the Mar of moon. You have to, I almost said Mars there, so sorry about that, but they have to be able to use the same systems or similar systems to what SpaceX and NASA astronauts will be using on the surface of the moon. The Axiom spacesuit isn't quite developed yet, but it will hopefully be developed in the next two years. People will start training in it and they'll be getting ready to go to the moon with the Artemis 3 and the Artemis 4 programs. So they did a they did this full mock up. They did all the testing. Uh, the ele elevator will transport equipment and crew between SpaceX's habitable area um, located near the top of the lander and the lunar surface as they exit for moonwalks. So the test allowed astronauts to interact with a flight like design of the elevator system, serving as both a functional demonstration of the hardware and providing the chance to receive valuable feedback from the crew's perspective. So this crew got a chance to test this out, which is Pretty cool. I mean, it's an elevator, but it's a moon elevator. How much cooler can you get if you're an elevator than that? So let's take a look at what this actually is. Uh, this is a this is a, this is how big this thing is, right? So when 
when this is actually on the Starship, this is a mock-up from NASA and SpaceX, people are tiny at the bottom of this thing. I've been there. I've seen the Starship a bunch of times, uh, probably a thousand times, and it's a giant, massive thing. And to be lowered by an elevator on the surface of the moon, uh, one, uh, elevators are scary anyway because they're elevators and they're not normal. But if you go to the surface of the moon, these people are tiny and you have to go up a hundred some odd feet and you're staring over the regolith of the moon. There's nothing in between you and the ground other than this elevator. They have to make sure this thing is absolutely perfect. Nothing can go wrong with this because if you're stuck halfway, you can't climb up. I mean, they they will probably put safety precautions on the uh, on the elevator and on the astronauts so they can be pulled up with a secondary system. And I hope they do that because if they don't, if it's just one and done, then these astronauts may be stranded if this thing doesn't work right. So they have to make sure this is perfect. And that's why these astronauts are there testing it right now. These people have tested this kind of system forever on the side of skyscrapers in New York City and Los Angeles and Chicago, wherever else around the world, Barcelona, that they have giant, giant buildings. So take a look at what this rudimentary testing uh, elevator is like for NASA at this point. So as you can see right here, I'll show you this. Right here, they have either a stop button it looks like a emergency, like if they hit this button, then it'll stop. It looks red to me. Now, if they have a red button, which means stop, they must have controls to make it go, right? So that looks like something in this vicinity could be the go button. Possibly. It looks like a smiley face too. So we'll make it into a smiley face. That looks like it's the go button right here. And it looks like this astronaut is reaching out to this go button, making it go up and down, making sure that there's enough room for them to do that. And as you can see, they will be tethered into this as well. So they need to have enough room to move around, to get to these buttons, to get to these physical tactile buttons. They have to be able to touch them. It can't be a touch screen. It can't be like your phone. Like it can't be like this. It can't be like that because you're in on the moon. You have to, be able to smack it if you need to stop or, or go. So you need to lower yourself down. Those are the two buttons that I can see. But also, as you can see over here, this is, this looks like it's the gate or the, the side, which opens up and the moon would be down here. So you would be either looking off to this side and it would open up. It looks like this is the winch to open up. Uh, in a cable pulley system right here that would maybe open up this side over here. I'm I'm not 100% sure. I looked at this a bunch of times, but I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to work because it's also stuck on this side over here onto the wall. So I'm not sure if it goes up and down, if it actually works, or if this is just a mock-up where people just, if they stand there or if it actually lowers and raises. So um, we're just kind of, you know, there's some, there's some guesswork here, but it looks like over here, there's a winch system and it looks like it would raise up this area right here. So as we know right now, two astronauts can fit in this comfortably. It looks like three people could fit in it comfortably. So they're going to have some gear in there too. They have scientific equipment that's going to bring down to the surface of the moon. And we're not exactly sure what scientific equipment they're going to be bringing down, but we do know that they're going to take lunar samples and they're going to check for water and they're going to check for oxygen. So they will have devices on the surface of the moon when they get there. So they have to transport those things down. And the great thing is with this, uh, they can transport people and the equipment at the same time. Or if people are on the surface of the moon and they're doing some work, they can take this elevator back up uh, without anything in it. And then if there's somebody else in the starship, uh, the first mission, there's only going to be two people down there. Uh, but if they have somebody else in the starship, they could load it up and then drop it down to the people below. Or if there's one person on the surface, uh, they can drop it down to the other person. But usually it's the buddy system. So I'm assuming there's going to be two people doing the work um, on the surface of the moon at any given time. You can't be out there alone. So I'm assuming... 
uh, at some point we're going to have more than two people on the moon at once. But it looks like there's enough room for, you know, if if you look at the the square footage here, that person takes up, you know, well, probably a little bit more space than that. So probably that much space right there. And then uh, this person probably takes up that much space. This is really bad math, by the way. <laughs> but if you, you know, we're doing we're doing a quick back of the napkin kind of math. So there's a ton of space up here in the front, which you probably don't want the front space covered with anything. But if you section that off, you could have a couple boxes there. You could also have a, a large amount of uh, freight back here in the corner and also some in the very back where this person is standing because, um, you know, that area right there could be full of equipment in this area here could be full of equipment. And then some areas up here could be full of equipment if they need it. Then there will be plenty of room for the astronauts to stand there. Uh, and when they when they get to the surface of the moon, it'll be easily accessible for them because it's right there on the surface with them. Now, as you can see up here, this person is wearing full astronaut gloves as well. So when they're wearing these gloves, they can't really use touchscreens anyway. So they got to be able to smack buttons. Also, they have to be able to move around comfortably. They have those giant backpacks full of oxygen and other things to keep them alive on their backs. So those are huge. Those are gigantic. It's like a giant rucksack on your back. And they also have their helmets on. So they have to be able to do these tests and they have to be able to see while they do these tests to be able to see everything, look around, make sure everything, because when you, you know, you're in an astronaut suit, you're in a space suit, you don't move like a normal human being. You move pretty slowly like a robot and you're, confiscate confiscated whatever that word is you're you're stuck in a position for a while because you're just a big big robot guy so not confiscated you're you're uh, stuck in a position for a while and you have like these astronauts had to do this testing so the future astronauts can get on this thing comfortably and know that everything works properly for them in their suits in the future 2027 2028 possible Artemis three landing on the moon. That's what NASA is going for. And that's what SpaceX is going for. So I hope they get everything uh, nailed down in the next few years. They'll definitely have more tests in the next few years of, uh, of a more robust system and all the little tweaks, whether it's uh, move this thing to the right, you know, six inches because it's in the, like my glove is too big and it doesn't really fit. I can't really, you know, tactilely touch this button or just make the buttons big. Uh, those could be the answers. You know, it could be very simple as we can go back to this, uh, this slide here or this look right here. These people use their hands like a normal human, you know, just smack a thing you know, smack a button up and down, touch, you know, you can use your fingers if you need to go up and down on this uh, window washer, which is basically, I mean, it's the same tech basically, but if you have those big gloves on, you cannot, you cannot do the same sort of, uh, sort of motions. You, you know, you can't really move your hands more than this. You can a little bit, you know, you will be, be able to function some, but you have to have a, a, a layer of protection around your hands when you get to the moon. So uh, these window washers kind of the early astronauts, if you think about it, the kind of without this window washer tech, um, the astronauts wouldn't be going to the moon. <laughs> if you think about it, just take it, take a little step back. Maybe not first astronauts, but you know, these people are, are uh, in the people that build these sort of systems important to uh, building the next human lander on the moon, which is crazy stuff on earth goes to the moon. The stuff that we explore on the moon comes back to earth. It's all full circle.